Hi, do you want to go expert mode with your macros in the mainsail? I'll show you. So first off, why do you want to do expert mode macros instead of normal? Well, here's a example. This is the uh, normal way of setting up macros. And yes, you can hide some of these, but they're still going to be in the same place, um, just or in that order. You cannot change that. So let's go over to export mode. And we have a much cleaner interface. We have the buttons that we use the most at the top here. And we have the buttons that we don't need to use as much down here. And the big benefit of this is that we can hide the ones that we don't want to use when we don't need them. So when our printer is printing, we can hide everything except for our load and unload. We can even hide those until you pause your printer. So there's a big um, flexibility in how you set this up. The first thing I'm going to do is show you some tips and tricks that will help you organize your macros, not only in this interface on mainsail, but also into your configs. The first thing we're, that we're going to do is to go to machine and you need to scroll down into your printer.config, your mainsail.config uh, and look for all, of your, all your macros. Now copy all of those into a folder or a file onto your desktop and let's put them into one single file, where in my case, I separate them even more. You can probably see that I have macros one, macros two, homing macros, and macros torture. These all are just normal config files. And the way that I make my setup work is that in my printer.config, at the top here, I have this include line so it says include macros one, two, torture and homing. I even have something for my NeoPixels. So if we go back and I go into my macros one. So remember the, the name that we need to use for this file, it can be anything. As long as you use it in this line with include, the name of the file can be anything. You can call it hippopotamus if you want to. So in this file, these are my most important macros, the one that I changed the most when I changed the stuff. So my start print macro is at the very top. This is the one that I've changed over to, to do the uh, first layer um, graphics that I did in my previous video. And there's a reason why I have it first because these are the ones that I'm most likely to change. And other than that, I have some prime line. I have my park tool head. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different macros in this file. Now in my torture file, there's, this is all of my torture macros. And the reason that I have these in a single file is that I can easily just transfer this single file to any of my printers and I can use my macros. Now that you've organized your macros into how li likely it is to, for you to change them or just to make it cleaner, one thing that I urge you to do is, let's go and look at this PID hotend um, macro. So notice that these lines are ignored. Mainsail do not see this or Clipper do does not see these because of this hashtag. So I can put in whatever text I want to make it easier for me to search for things. And then this file, right? Or sorry, this line right here is what sets the name that shows up in Mansail. So this does not have to be a specific, specific um, G code. It does not have to be a specific thing. You can call it whatever you want. So for this, it's a my PID hot end tune. And for me, um, I like to do description just in case I share this file with any of you, you can go in and have a look at what I'm doing and how I do it. Now, all of these files have something in common. They all have normal names. We have shape, which is my input shaper, PID tune, level bed. 
all of these are quite simple. However, there are some specific cases, like with a touchscreen, um, where your unload filament macro will, won't you work because your touchscreen is looking for a specific G-code. In this case, I've just copied my first uh, macro and I've pasted it again and then just renamed that single line. This is an easy way for you to have multiple macros with the same name or multiple macro names with the same macro, sorry. Now that we have all our macros organized, let's find out, find out how we make it look pretty in main set. So from go to this, to this, it's quite simple. Let's go into our settings at the top right. Let's scroll down to our macros. Now, if I turn this to simple, this is the normal setup. There's a simple on and off toggle. So if we look at this macro right here, it says ABL mesh. If I turn it off here, it disappears. And if you just have a few macros, that's an easy way to just turn off what you don't need and only see what you need. However, if we want this to be the most efficient and um, safest way to do it, let's turn on expert. So I'm going to show you how to do one of these categories and then the rest you can do it yourself. So I'm going to just get my torture macro group and I'm going to delete it. Now there goes all of my torture macros. So let's set it up again. So let's put, press edit group and I'll rename this to torture. And yes, I use all caps because I read better with all caps. We can set our color. So I'm going to set this to warning. This means it will show up red. And then for status, I want to, this to be showing only if the printer is idle. So leave the first one on. I do not want to show this while the printer is paused. So I'm going to click this. This means it hides it when the printer is paused. And I also want to hide it if the printer is printing. So these three, you can call, you can um, toggle uh, the visibility of when your macros are showing. Next, we have the group macros. So right now it's saying no macros in this group. And it's as simple as this. I want one macro to be in here. I'll look in my list. And for this first example, I'm just going to use my ABL mesh because it's at the top. And I'm going to press add. And now we can see that the group has surfaced and it's, it contains that ABL mesh. If I click another one, that two will appear. Let's delete these and it, let's do something else. Let's press bed temp first and then ABL mesh. Now look at the uh, what's happening here. The first, down, first one that we clicked is the first one that appears. So once you've um, decided which one you wanna have in your group, let's scroll down and let's find them all. So the first one that I want is torture because it tortures all of my axes. The second one would be torture XY short. And I, the next one would be torture XY, torture Z, torture shake, and then walk. And now all of these have shown up down here as a separate category for me to select. Now to, to move these up to where the others are. I'll, I'll let's go into settings again. Go to dashboard, and we can move this these torture macros over here. And I want to change the color, so I'll go into edit for torture macros, and I'll change this to primary again. And now they're all purple, just the way I like it. And this is the easiest way for you to organize your macros. Um, let's just show you the my idle macros. So they're only visi visi visible if my printer is printing 
or if my printer is paused. Now I don't want this to be, um, um, sorry, uh, I don't want these to be visible if my printer is paused, I can turn it off. And just like that, it they will go away. So I'll click close and they're saved. Of course, I want these to be visible. And close. And that's how I set up my macros. Um, yours may vary. Uh, you don't, you don't, won't necessarily have as many macros as I do, but this at least gives you a little bit more uh, organization and makes your uh, main sail a little bit cleaner. That's it for me. I hope you liked that video. If you did, please press, press that like button. If you've not subscribed, please do. And I'll see you next week.